One of my mentors, the great British bass, Matthew Rose, once told me, you have to convey a message with everything that you sing. It's not about you singing. It's not about a person, I don't know, is singing that aria. No, it's about this aria is being sung. So you have to like put yourself behind the work. You have to know every word. You have to do what's on the page really well. And this is more taking away what you're doing than adding things on top of what you're doing. It's yeah. so lovely to meet you here on Zoom, Fabian. Thank you so much for giving me this little platform. I'm very excited. I'm doing great. Lovely Hi. Monday. Mondays are good because they're free for me this semester, so I'm very happy. <laughs> I really okay. <laughs> okay, so you don't have the Sunday evening blues? No, not as much anymore. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um but tell me, Fabian, you stay now this semester. Where are you based at the moment? I am so I'm in Vienna, right? I'm yeah. studying at the MDV, at the Universität für Musik und Darstellende Kunst Wien. Yeah. I'm in my fourth year now, which makes my seventh semester. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're on the last last year for the bachelor. And I then yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that. But now tell me, um, I first want also to know is is how did you um become a singer or or how, what inspired you to sing? Uh so I got to the party really late. I was not I was not like I'm 12 years old, I play three instruments, I want to become a singer. That was not me. Okay. Yeah. I I knew that I wanted to do something on the stage my whole life. And I started, um, I was like, I want to be an actor. Then I was like, maybe not. Then I was like, I want to be a professional magician. I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> then I was like, let's do musical theater. I was like, ah, too much dancing, not my thing. And then I was like, opera. Okay, wait, that's it. It's opera. And mm -hmm. then I was already 17. And my music teacher in school back in Germany told me, um, so you have this very dark uncontrolled voice <laughs> maybe yeah. get it like get a teacher for that and then i was very lucky to like after two vocal lessons i somehow got into the extra core of the opera bon i still don't know how that worked yeah. and after that i was just hooked on the idea of being an opera singer and got into vienna really quick and and it just it almost felt like i didn't have a choice you know it's just yeah. people were just I'm very happy for that. People were just pushing me right to left, right to left, and now I'm where I am. And that's just really good. Yeah, but but it's almost as if you got your flow, you know, that, that, yeah. you, that you suddenly it uh, registered or it kicked in that what you wanted to do, and then from there on it, it happened like that. Isn't that wonderful that you, you know, that you could experience it like that? It's a privilege. It's a privilege, like to have that much guidance. And like my parents are super supportive, and everybody's super supportive, and my friends who have been in Vienna are super supportive. So that is great and means a lot. And it is wonderful to have just the opportunity to study this, to be a singer, whatever that means for everybody is different, I guess. And that's great and beautiful. And to have the chance to go out there and go like, okay, so I have four years to focus on what it means to be a singer and to develop that is just great. Especially in Vienna, it's great, where you're surrounded by art yeah. everywhere. When I was here for the first time, I, I had a like, I had a shock. I didn't know where to go because yeah. there were like five world stars all singing at like one place and one evening I was like, where do I start? Who do I go yeah. see first? And that's just crazy and super inspiring. And it keeps you on your feet. Like you're like, okay, I want this. I have to work. I have to go practice. And yeah. that's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost something to live up to, you know. So you see the example from for where you can be, be or where you're heading to. So, yeah. But what I I love about this story of yours is that it's actually then a great inspiration also for somebody who didn't start early and who who didn't have the opportunity, for example, to play instruments or or to start at a very young age. So. Did you at a young age already um, 
had the exposure to opera or theater or what was it that suddenly made you realize that that was something that you would like to do? I I have no idea how this came to be because my parents are not super like they they did never go to the theater before they had me. And then when I was like, I think it was like five, I was like, we are going to go see the Beauty and the Beast, the musical. And they were like, why? I go like, because I want to see it. <laughs> and they were lost. Like They were like, what's happening? Like, why doesn't he want to play soccer? Like, why doesn't he want to go see this? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then I made them go and, and we went to the opera and everywhere ever since, because I was so hooked on the idea of going there all the time. Uh, but I was never exposed to it. But I just had a fascination seeing like the advertisements, seeing costumes and stage. And like, I've always, and I think this is something which is maybe, okay, I don't want to sound like an old man now, but I think it's something that is getting lost is this feeling of seeing something live because yeah. it is really different than seeing something on a DVD or on recording. Like I'm a huge fan of the mass streams and streaming. It's great. I love it. But going to see it live is just different and it it's exciting like it your adrenaline is rushing in the audience you know it's fascinating and this is something which i think we have to preserve a bit more and to invite people to just go try to see it live once maybe it's a bit more pricey than seeing it at the cinema but it is a different experience it's not better it's just different and yeah. more personal maybe yeah and I think it's always also this uh, idea of uh, just the senses, you know, you it's it's the the smells and the the feelings and the the noises that you know that that comes with this live performances that I think is so wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 exactly this. It's like you go into a theater and and you, you it's the little things that make it so special, like. When you hear it, I don't know, when you hear a door close on stage and makes this like clicking sound and it's just so more real and personal and there in the moment than something you have on a recording, right? Yeah. And that is just fascinating. And every evening it's different. Even if it's the same cast, the same conductor, it's a totally different performance every night. It's incredible for me Like to see that happen. It's crazy. Yeah, that is also something that I hear from many artists saying that exact thing that you can actually go and watch the same performance uh, two or three nights in a row and it will all be different. So uh, that's interesting that you say that as well. But now, um, so you're now in Vienna studying uh, and you say now the fourth year. So you started during the pandemic then. Uh, I started just before the pandemic. Okay. And then after my first semester, we were in the middle. I will never forget that moment. We sat in the middle of rehearsals. And one of my uh, good friends in Vienna sat next to me. We were doing the choir in uh, Barbier di Sevilla at the university. And, you know, you heard about this virus coming. And we were like, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, we don't know. Like, mm -hmm. something, something, something. And then my phone goes like, ding. And my mom sent me a screenshot, like Austrian universities will be closing from next week on. Oh. And I went and I see in the middle of rehearsals, I go like, um, sorry, <laughs> what do we say to this? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then we had to close in the production and it was just terrible. It was terrifying. Yeah. Um, I can imagine for a first, you know, for your first semester that to happen must be very, um, sort of unreassuring also of what's going to happen now for you for the future. Yeah. Mm. But I will say something which is maybe a bit controversial, which is for me, the first lockdown was extremely helpful in my artistic development, I think. Well, still saying the pandemic is terrible, right? I'm not yeah, saying yeah. that this, but for me, I was at the, at the uni for one semester and I realized that I was okay. I was giving away all like the responsibility to my teachers. I was like, okay, yeah, they will help me warm up. They will help me do that. But then if you're at home for basically a year and working over Zoom only, you cannot do this anymore. Like you have to be like, okay, I have to get up at 9 a.m. still the latest. I have to warm up. I have to do this. 
I have to prepare for auditions that may be coming up, maybe not, we don't know. Um, and it teaches you a lot about discipline and um, just being a responsible singer, um, whatever that means for you as a singer. But like, yeah, so I think it was for me, the first lockdown was extremely helpful in that way. Oh, I try to make it pr as productive as possible, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's actually then wonderful that it happened early for you. So you have this type of discipline that you could take forward. Yeah, right now it would be worse for me because there's more. It was my first semester. I wasn't doing a lot. I wasn't working a lot. I wasn't singing a lot, you know. So if it would happen now, it would be worse for me because there's so much work and money attached to this. There would be like whatever but like yeah. back then it was just oh i can't go to uni now it would be i can't go to uni and i can't work and i think for me it's the fourth year i'm slowly trying to get out of being only a student into slowly making this a job because it will be a job at some point so um and right now it would be it wouldn't be as i couldn't make it as productive anymore because there would just be yeah. too much that would be lost for me. So, yeah. So um, now talking about this going out and, and finding or, or making it a job or finding a job, is that something that uh, you gradually get into or is it something that suddenly in your fourth year you realize, hey, you know, this is going to be reality now? I was very fortunate to have a very healthy development i think into this because i i'm a base so there are not many of us so we get offers pretty easy as terrible as it maybe sounds but like we just get people go like do you want to sing this really easy with us because they're very few and i think when i was in my first year at the uni i was the only one i think who sang the repertoire oh no we were two there was two of us and then Heather Tan, who you just spoke to, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, she asked me, do you want to sing Sarastro in my production? And I was at the uni for two weeks at this point. And I was like, uh, uh, I guess so. Yeah, sure. Let's try. Let's see what happens. Why not? And then I sing this and then I did a bohème with her. And like th those were really safe space productions, like just try, error, fail, get up, do it again. And then I, it started that people were asking me to go like, oh, do you want to sing Sarastro in a professional context where we actually pay you for it? And you, but you have to be good as well. And so for me, this development is slowly starting to happen. I mean, I'm really slowly, but like it's happening. So I think that I was really lucky to do a lot of stuff at uni first in a safe space mm -hmm. without... Um, any danger of failing miserably in front of important people so that now I can be a bit more reassured when I set foot on stage. I'm still very nervous. I'm still young. I'm still just 23 and probably don't know what I'm doing, but like, you know, it's, I just have this little bit of background that makes me feel like, okay, we got this. We, we got this once we will do it again. We'll be fine. And I think that is really important to have these productions where you're in a safe space and you're just able to, let's just try. And if we crash and burn, that's it. That can happen. Just so you learn. Yeah. Yeah. More but in touch it, with yourself. Yeah. But it's a, it's a, the slow growing process or slow developing process is actually, I think, better than being thrown into something that you're not ready for. Even if it's if it's a wow, okay, you know, it's this opportunity, but it can be also it can go also to the other side where it we like you say you fail in front of maybe people that you didn't want to. So yeah, hmm. but I think, and I don't know. I'm starting to realize this now in my fourth year that this process of developing is really difficult because you have this. So when you go to uni. There are some people who are just born singers who just go to uni, they can sing, they open their mouth, they sound like a world star, and you're like, oh, that's great. But uh, most of us had to learn a technique first in order to just produce sound, you know. And um, after this comes the whole different process, which is like languages, interpretation. And then 
this is something where I'm like thinking a lot about it lately because one of my mentors, the great British bass, Matthew Rose, once told me, you have to convey a message with everything that you sing. It's not about you singing. It's not about a person, I don't know, is singing that aria. No, it's about this aria is being sung. So you have to like put yourself behind the work. You have to know every word. You have to do what's on the page really well. And this is more taking away what you're doing than adding things on top of what you're doing. And I think that's a very difficult step for every young person because you just want to go out there and make it happen. You want to tell the story when you're like, this is it. Let me show this to you, which is great. But then again, you have to hold back and like take away things you want the piece to be, which it isn't, you know? And so that is a really, really difficult process where I'm just like at the very beginning of, and um, I think that is really difficult, but extremely fulfilling to do so, to realize ah, I'm onto something here and this piece is strong enough on itself. I just have to sing it. I don't have to have to make it. I just have to tell the story. That's all I have to do. And then that's my job as a singer fulfilled, which is, yeah. Yeah, but isn't it for you as young singers also the pressure that, you know, you're talking about world stars and and that there's these people that, uh, or these singers that you try to uh, live up to or that you admire, that that also loses somehow the message or the the art form, you know, that, that it becomes more about the person than it really becomes uh, that it's about the music or the piece. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think that's a thing which is happening or like which has always been there. It's not like a phenomenon of our time now. But it's interesting because the people, how, how should I say this? If you go see someone and they're maybe not the biggest name. They're maybe not the biggest name. And you go see them and they sing and they take this really serious what they're doing. You know, they, they try to present this piece, simple, beautiful, elegant, and with their truth in it, it will be the most touching experience you can ever have. There's nothing which comes remotely close to this for me personally. It's really touching. And, um, I've had those evenings in Vienna many times here. And we, we are really lucky, right, to have this great opera house. And I think the singers we have nowadays are doing this, though. I think we have great singers nowadays. I do not believe or support the statement that singing nowadays is in a terrible state. I do not believe that. I think that's wrong. I think we have tremendous singers out there. Being an opera singer has probably never been as hard as it is now, I think, with all of the challenges that come along with it. Social media. Oh, yeah. Traveling more than before, having to sing everything everywhere. And I have a lot of respect for everybody who does this job and who calls himself an opera singer. And if they do it on a level where they are able to move me emotionally as a listener, that is super inspiring. And this is what I do this for, right? Because I try, it's very difficult to not make it about yourself because you're on stage singing at the end of the day. But, and it takes a lot of faith in the music, a lot of courage to say, this is not about me right now. This is about this. And this is really difficult. And, and, but if you manage it really fulfilling, um, and you just feel it click when you maybe, you know, you sing an aria and you feel like, okay, that was, I think that was, that felt correct now. And yeah. then you can feel the audience responding differently than when you just go like, oh, let me, let me present myself to you because this is not, it's not, it's also great. It's very effective, but it's not as pure and direct as mm-hmm. the other option we also have. Uh, but tell me now, when you set out to uh, go and study singing and, and wanted to be an opera singer, is this what you, um, did it turn out the way you thought it would? I mean, did, did it um, sort of, was this how you 
thought about opera singing or did something change that you um, found it more positive or maybe more negative? Yeah, that is really interesting. I never thought about that, but I think when I got into, because I came from like musical theater acting, that was what I wanted to do first. And then I got into opera. When I started, I always was like, I have to convey the story. I have to, have to like, okay, here's what I want to tell you. Listen, this is the story. And then I kind of got lost in this ocean that is vocal technique, which is great. And it's fascinating. And I have an obsession with it now, but it's kind of scary once you get into it and you realize how many schools of thoughts are there on singing and you know what people want to tell you and what you should believe and then at the end of the day you realize okay but i have to sing i have to be on stage singing so i have to learn how to sing with my instrument and i think that is a task in and of itself and i was kind of lost in that department for a for a few years where i was like, okay i have to figure this out like high notes how do i do high notes how do i do this but now i'm coming back to this okay that's all great that's all lovely technique is important and the toolbox is important but that's not what i started to do this for so i think it's something you have to get back to because um it's a never-ending process as well you know these are little disclaimer these are all my opinions today like if you ask me tomorrow this could be a whole different story like i don't know but i'm pretty sure that like you have to tell the story and this is something which i'm realizing more and more now because i what i want to hear in a singer is that they try to convey a story to me and it's just this little thing you feel with the audience when you are like okay i'm not going to make i'm not going to pull on a show i'm just going to sing and they respond and they go to me like that was oh, i was so moved and then you go like okay that's enough because yeah. it's very easy to as we say in germany mit kanonen auf spatzen zu schießen and to just like drain audience in emotions and big emotions and big feelings and they cannot process it mm -hmm. how they're you know and they don't want to see that, I think. They just want to see honesty. And that is really difficult to, to reach. Yeah. So, but it changed. It was a was an arch for me to go from, it still is, right? I'm still at the beginning of this process, but like to go from, okay, what does it mean to be a singer vocally to yeah. why do I do this? <laughs> why do I want to do this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's true. And it almost if it's too much focus on the technique, you lose that connection with your audience. And that's actually the important part. There is a beautiful sentence by Christa Ludwig. Um, so I hope I quote it correctly now. But she said she offered the example of Hermann Prey, who was always like a teeny tiny bit flat in his recordings, never completely on pitch, but the most moving recitals you can hear on a CD probably in that repertoire. And you see, although not a technically perfect voice, maybe for some people, I, I, I love it, I adore him, but like, it's still very moving. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to like, you know, make a decision. What, what do you want to convey in the concert situation for yourself? And there is no right or wrong. I think whatever you do, whatever every singer does while believing in it is correct for that singer in that moment because mm -hmm. you cannot judge art you cannot judge singing that is that's like playing god you know that makes no sense yeah. it's everybody's decision everybody's life and everybody's truth of what is art to them in that moment and this is why this is the most fascinating thing on this planet for me personally yeah yeah because it's uh not not uh, everything is for everybody you know no, yeah. you, you cannot please everybody and it and everybody hears it differently and experiences it differently so um yeah and it's but beautiful now, mm, yeah exactly it's great that it can be that way, you know, that yeah. it's not just one way. But now, Fabian, tell me, what are your wishes for the future? Um, 
You mean for 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 in general or yeah, like for, for your career or what what do you what is the the wish now for what you want to achieve? So something I really wish for because I'm having this situation right now and it's glorious is that I get to sing with a lot of friends because that is just really fulfilling. That is just you can sing with everybody if you're professional you can work with everyone but there's something special about seeing with people who you really like and, mm -hmm. and appreciate so that is and then maybe you know in my last year getting into a nice graduate program or into a nice like young artist program would be great mm -hmm. to slowly develop into like a adult opera singer you know, to, to make more challenges and to like, yeah, to just have the chance to grow consistently in a non-toxic environment. That is, I think, what everybody wishes for and what I wish everybody to get. And that's just the best. Yeah, that is, I think, it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, in general, that our situation we have on Earth at the moment maybe calms down a bit because it's 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 a lot for many people and it's um i think we could all profit from this situation the all of the things that are going on at the moment which is crazy yeah. to calm down is something i wish for everybody not related to opera but just in general yeah yeah, yeah. but i do think it's um i agree with you when you said you know that you like to be with friends or people you like around you because i think that you bounce off each other as well. You know, that energy um, from people that you enjoy being with. Yeah, it's it's just different. It's just different. You have trust on stage and the audience also feel it. You know, they can yeah. feel that there is something there. And I'm very lucky. All the projects I still have this year are with people who I really like. So, mm -hmm. and it takes away, it's incredible. It takes away from all the nervousness. You're not as nervous anymore. Yeah. Because you know, no one on stage wants to see this. They're like, will he make it? They're all there rooting for you. And this is, this is just the best yeah. feeling. Yeah. Well, this was so lovely to talk to you now. And, and what a great uh, privilege you have to study here in Vienna and get all these um, other experiences as well. And um, I hope to see you or hear you sing one day. <laughs> thank you so much Pedro. it's been lovely thank you so much yeah. for this chance to to express some of my opinions it's been yeah. great it's a great so, way to start the week <laughs> yeah and it's wonderful it's very inspirational for, of you know somebody that that didn't have all this exposure to art that you can still do it and that you still had the dream and and that it's the dream is is coming true fingers crossed yeah, for that. <laughs> but now Fabian, just one last question. Um, can you do a shout out for your favorite? I see you drinking coffee for your favorite coffee shop in Vienna. Ooh. For your favorite restaurant. <laughs> Ooh, that's difficult. Can I make it three? Yes. Okay. Yes. So for, yeah. for me, favorite coffee place, just because of the like overall like vibes and everything is Kafka on the Maria Hilfer Straße. Oh yeah. I just love it. It's just it's, it's it's like a little bit weird and I love it. Best restaurant in Vienna for me personally would be Brauhof. It's on Oyster Maria Hilfer Straße. Great food, tremendous beer, great service, great prices. Mm -hmm. And then um yeah, and then uh Soja noodles also on Maria Hilfer Straße. Just okay. Yeah, these are the top three places everybody should check out when they're in Vienna. Absolutely. Yeah. It seems that you and Heather hang out at the same places. Yeah, we, okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah, <laughs> we do a lot. And like we, uh, she introduced me to soy, so, so, soy noodles, soy noodles. I don't remember, but like to this place and it is, it's just fantastic. It's, it's, mm. oh, like, it's okay. like, yeah. I have to try it now because it's the second time I heard this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should not regret it yeah well Fabian have a lovely week and a lovely Monday and, much. you too yeah, and I hope to um, to meet you in person soon yeah 
That would That's be lovely. Great. Okay. <laughs> Have a nice week. Thank you so much, Petra. Thank you, bye, Fabian. Bye. Bye. bye.